Mm -hmm. It is the morning cryptos. It is Monday morning, February 5th, and it's not looking too pretty out there, people. It's not looking too good. Uh, ouch. Bitcoin has hit, <laughs> it has hit and crossed the 200 day average. So, uh, the big pop is over. It's pretty clear. It's over. Uh, the next question is, will it recover or will it keep, will it do a long, slow slide? Um, that's a really good question. There, uh, there's a video that I'm halfway through watching an interview with Richard Hart by Ivan on Tech, which is kind of interesting to finally see someone have a conversation with Richard Hart who actually can technologically keep up with him. However, Richard is also extremely articulate at describing how it's pretty much the end of Bitcoin, and he's really sad about it. However, he was also really wrong about Ethereum. So I like Richard Hart and I appreciate his intellect and his willingness to speak his truth. However, I don't like really what he's saying today. And I'm, I'm kind of concerned that he might be right this time. So, you know, he's talking about, you know, literally a bear market for the next two years, blah, blah, blah. He he's talking about Amazon and Facebook creating their own coins. Why would they use Bitcoin, right? So some interesting, some interesting things in the world of crypto and the process of mass adoption. And this is definitely not an up day, <laughs> right? So what do you do? You know, many of us who have committed to learning how to do this are willing to hang in. The people that aren't, you know, that kind of we're chasing the highs here, you know, uh, let's say they got in at 20, right? At one point I had taken a lot of profits from my other coins and I had nowhere else to put them, but in Bitcoin at 19,000 and it bothered me and I, I sold it. I got out of it because it, I didn't want to be up that high. Right. And I'm glad I did. That was a good instinct. Uh, my biggest mistake was, Buying too soon as we had the retracement, the retracement, the retraction, the retracement. Um, you know, but the thing is, you know, you never know how long, right? You don't know how far it's going to go. You don't know what FUD is coming. You don't know a lot of different things. So the thing is, who do you believe, right? And there's a lot of misinformation going on. There's a lot of opinions going on. There's a lot of different beliefs being expressed from... Warren Buffett's and Jamie Dimon's, oh, this is bullshit, this is, this is going to crash, to your John McAfee's, I will eat my own dick if it doesn't go to 100,000 in two years or whatever his timeline is. So you have people on both sides, and the question is, you know, and then you have Bitcoin, <laughs> which is almost unusable, is that a good thing or a bad thing, right? Good news, bad news. The good news is Bitcoin is still the number one coin. Bad news is you can't use it to buy anything. Good news is it's really safe from hackers and it's decentralized. Bad news is it's decentralized so nothing gets changed very fast, right? Good news is there's miners all over the world. Bad news is there's miners all over the world, right? Good news is it's really secure. The bad news is uh, it's a transparent blockchain, so it's not private, right? So there's all these good news, bad news things, and the question is, you know, what's next, and will we continue to be able, for once in our lives, be actually able to make a living on something, right, that the rest of the world wants, that we know about, that maybe we're here sooner? We don't know. There's a lot. 
there's a lot of uncertainty right now. You know, credit card companies are saying, no, sorry, we'll shut your account or we'll, we won't allow you to buy Bitcoin with your credit card, right? Good news, bad news. Is that good news? Good news that people aren't going into debt to buy Bitcoin. Bad news is they can't buy Bitcoin, right? Good news, they can't buy Bitcoin, but they don't seem to want to buy Bitcoin anyway because Bitcoin's down. It's only when Bitcoin's up that they want to buy Bitcoin, but Bitcoin sometimes comes back, right? It went up 50%. It's going to come back 40%, right? Um, and the bottom line is, a year ago, I bought my first Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is trading, I think it's seven or $900, something like that. And here we are concerned about 7639 Right? It's still up massively for the year. But the perception right now, there is blood in the streets, people. This is not pretty. Uh, and the question is, it has hit this 200-day average. Will it hold there? I don't know. Let's want to actually get an RSI up here. Relative Strength Index. And we have touched the 30. So the question is, now that we have touched the 30, oh, I have two RSIs. I had one all, all the way up there. Let me get rid of this one. Um, I'll just show this one. There we go. We have touched the 30. So is it possible? This is the bottom. You know, the seasoned traders say, buy the dips. Right? But it's hard to buy the dips, as Richard Hart pointed out, when you buy the dip and then it goes down even more, and you buy the dip and it goes down even more. But that's what separates the professionals from the newbies. And I, I'm still a newbie enough to know that this is freaking me out. Right, So uh, I don't think I'm going to go through the whole thing because I don't know if I can handle it today. My basic attention token that I just bought the other day has gone down. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin price, I just uh, hit refresh just a minute ago. Uh, Bitcoin price is again below 8,000, but traders forecast fresh upside, right? Now the media wants good news, right? Now the media now wants some hope that they can fire up the next run because they sold a lot of eyeballs, their information. Right, so here's CNBC. Over 60 billion wiped off the value of cryptocurrencies as Bitcoin drops below dot dot dot. Right. So the thing is, you know, where are the people who know what they're talking about and what are they saying? And this is where I really recommend. First of all, you check out this guy Joseph Young on Twitter, uh, and then you look below my video. I have a link to Crypto Grinders. I have a link to Datadash. I have a link to Crypto Investor. Those are three of the best teachers that I have found after searching for over a year. They don't charge you. Uh, they don't hook you into any scams, and they will keep you safe. And I highly recommend you watch them. Learn. Pay attention. We are setting up now for the next big run. And I think there will be a big run, but it may not look like it did last year, right? So... Anyway, Joseph Young, 42 minutes ago, says hodling, holding on for dear life, is hard, and it is especially difficult if you put an absurdly large portion of your portfolio into the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market. And for some of us, this is all we have, because this is how we're learning to invest, right? So it's kind of it's kind of difficult when you have gone all in just for the purposes of learning, right? Sometimes you have to go all in on something, and sage advice from other people will only put 10% of your portfolio into that. Well, I don't have a fucking portfolio, right? I started with $20 that I stole from myself, right? And I put another $20 in and another $20 in and I learned that way. And crypto is the only place I've ever been able to collect any kind of funds, any kind of money and make it grow, right? So, if you expect an asset to go up by 30 to 40 percent overnight, as crypto did in December, expect it to fall by 30 to 40 percent overnight as well. And I think that's true. I don't think it's over though. I think we are in for 
an exciting roller coaster ride. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I like it, right? And not everybody is ready for it. But the rest of the world, I still think this is the gold rush of our age. And people don't have to travel to Alaska or, or you know, the Sierra Nevada. <laughs> they don't have to go to South Africa. They don't have to go anywhere. They can just participate in the gold rush from the comfort of their own home and computer or phone. But it's a gold rush. Anyway. Joseph Young. It was quite surprising to see the South Korean finance minister have enough understanding of blockchain to know that cryptos are necessary as incentive systems. Finance minister is against excessive regulation because it may hinder development. And I think he's right. Interesting article there. And this is the interview with Richard Hart. Why would I buy Bitcoin or Ethereum when I can make my own tokens? And Joseph Young says, because nobody uses your tokens, right? And there is use case for Bitcoin and Ethereum. At least on the exchanges, you can buy other cryptos with Bitcoin and Ethereum. But Richard Hart has some really good points. I just don't know if I can handle listening to them right now. Uh, I listened to half the interview, and it, it's it's pretty sobering. But I think I think that's healthy. I think he has a healthy voice, and needs to be considered. I think he he thinks deeply about things. I I don't want to agree with him on a lot of things, though. Um, I think he feels personally personally hurt that Bitcoin isn't holding above a certain level. Uh, and he, he was all in, he was a maximalist, and he's no longer a maximalist. So, um, good interview. I think you should definitely check it out. Painful interview. And I think Ivan did a pretty good job of keeping up with him and challenging him uh, and also allowing him to speak. So, uh, Joseph Young, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum are not backed by anything, so they have no value. And he points out correctly, so... So are fiat. Well, so is fiat. This money is shit. A trash bag full of Venezuelan cash can barely buy lunch. So, yeah. And here's a good interview on the India cryptocurrency regulation situation. And the Economic Affairs Secretary clearly states the government is fine with people using or trading crypto assets in a legitimate way as long as they're not used illegally, right? Interview with three largest crypto exchanges in India, founders and CEOs unanimously state ban rumors that uh, unanimously state ban rumors are nothing more than FUD and the statement of finance minister was grossly misinterpreted. Don't blindly trust reports from the media. Really good advice. All right, so on and on we go. On and on we go. Right? Not a good day in crypto land. Uh, but it might be a good day. It might be exactly what we need uh, to set up the next run, or it might be the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> I have a feeling, though. I have a feeling. I have a feeling that uh, it's not over. All right, so that's it for today. My name is Mark Shepard. If for some reason you like this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And if uh, you need a little break from the cryptos, check out my music. I'll be uploading more music uh, in the days and weeks to come. And uh, I think that's it for now. I appreciate you guys very much. Thanks for your comments. And uh, let me know how you're doing. I want to know how you're doing. I'm here to help, right? And if I can find some glimmer of hope in this, I will share it with you. And if I can find some way to do it better, I'll share it with you at the moment. Um, the moment I'm I'm down on a lot of my different projects but I bought most of them with profits when things were up 40% so I think I'm gonna be okay I think I'm gonna live but we'll see people can change their minds rapidly and that's what this is this is groups of people all over the world having thoughts and perceptions about crypto and it's new. It's still new, people, and we're learning how to deal with it. And it is a beast unto itself. It's an animal. It is It is a being. It seems to have its own life here. And uh, 
Anyway, that's it for today. I love you guys. Peace. Screaming is over now. Start the music. <laughs> oh, man. Mm -hmm.